everyone, I'm Adam Harrington, and in this video, I want to introduce you to a mushroom that you're really likely to find during your spring mushroom hunts, especially when you're looking for morel mushrooms. It's this mushroom right down here, and I'm really excited that I found this mushroom in this area because upon finding this mushroom, I'm taking a look around and I'm seeing a big stand of tulip poplar trees. And I'm really excited because that's where morel mushrooms tend to grow here in Pennsylvania. Not necessarily this time of year, it's getting a little late, but I'll definitely come back to this area next year. So when you're looking for one mushroom, take a look around because you might be in a habitat where other mushrooms tend to grow. So this is the deer mushroom or the fawn mushroom, Pluteus cervinus. And this isn't the easiest mushroom to identify, especially if you're a beginner mushroom hunter, but it is indeed an edible mushroom. However, not many people really regard this mushroom as a choice edible mushroom because of its smell, because of its taste but I do enjoy eating it. And so in this video, I wanna answer the question, is it worth it? Is it worth it to seek out Pluteus cervinus? Is it worth it to harvest it? Is it worth it to eat it? Now, Pluteus cervinus, the deer mushroom, that genus and species name actually refers to a group of organisms. So it's probably more accurate to call this a member of the Pluteus cervinus group. That's what the newest research shows, that there are actually a lot of different species hiding out within the Pluteus cervinus group, and so it would require microscopy or it would require the use of a microscope in order to really determine which species in particular this one is. But I do feel confident in calling this a member of the Pluteus cervinus group. For the rest of the video, I'm just going to refer to this as Pluteus cervinus. So for all of you diehard mushroom hunters and mycologists out there, just know that I'm referring to the Pluteus cervinus group whenever I'm holding this mushroom. So now that we have that, out there, let's talk about the identifying features of this mushroom. So Pluteus cervinus grows on deciduous wood in a temperate forest, and it's widespread throughout Europe and also here in eastern North America, and its range extends west to Wisconsin, but it's also been reported in California as well, but typically here in the United States, you're looking in eastern United States. Rarely has this been found on conifer wood, and rarely is it found on wood chips, but it can also be found in soil without any apparent connection to wood. But typically I'm seeing this on deciduous wood, typically in a temperate forest. Now this mushroom is bell-shaped when young. It becomes convex or nearly flat with age. And the cap is some shade of brown, but variants do occur. So you will see grayish brown, you'll see brownish gray, and sometimes you will see it almost turning whitish. Now the gills, this is a key identifying characteristic. When you flip this mushroom upside down, notice that the gills are crowded. They're white when young, but they become pink with age. So it looks like two different mushrooms, depending on the age of it. It'll be white when young, the gills I'm referring to, then it becomes pink with age. And the gills are free. They are non-attached to the stem. So this means that the gills stop short of the stem. It's almost like there's a little racetrack around the stem where the gills just don't even touch. So this is a key identifying characteristic that the gills are free, they're non-attached. Now the stem is slightly, sometimes broadened at the base, and it's white and it usually has longitudinal brown or gray brown fibrils. So look for that on the stem. It doesn't look to be always smooth. You'll see these longitudinal brown or gray brown fibrils. And this mushroom actually smells like radish or raw potatoes. And it kind of imparts that flavor into the dish as well. And when you take a spore print from this mushroom, it should be pinkish brown or brownish pink. And whenever you find this mushroom, you typically see it solitary or scattered on well decayed wood. So it's typically the wood that looks like it's been there for a very long time, it's fallen down and it's well rotted, meaning like you can almost walk on top of that log and it would just crush underneath your feet. And you typically find this mushroom from April through about November. So let's just highlight some of those key points that I just discussed. So you're looking for a medium sized mushroom. It's not too large and it's not too small either, but variants do occur. A medium sized mushroom that grows directly on wood or very near to wood. And you're looking for a mushroom that has whitish gills at first that become pinkish with age. And these gills are not attached to the stem. That's a key identifying characteristic. These gills are not attached to the stem. And this mushroom drops a pinkish brown spore print. So definitely take a spore print before you decide to do anything with a mushroom, especially Pluteus cervinus. Remember the Pluteus cervinus group. Now, one of the key lookalike genera, the genus would be Entoloma. You might confuse Pluteus cervinus for an Entoloma mushroom. And you don't wanna do that because several Entoloma species are toxic. Some of them are edible. If you've ever eaten the abortive Entoloma, that one kind of looks like Pluteus cervinus, and that's an edible mushroom, no. However, several Entoloma species are toxic. You definitely don't wanna eat those Entoloma mushrooms. Entoloma mushrooms do deposit pinkish spore prints, kind of like Pluteus cervinus. However, those mushrooms are typically terrestrial. They grow away from wood. They grow up out of the forest floor, typically. And their gills are directly attached to the stem. So they have attached gills. 
Pluteus cervinus does not have attached gills. Other lookalikes would be Pluteus patacitus, but that's a member of the Pluteus genus. However, that mushroom typically grows in urban or suburban areas in clusters, typically in wood chips. But you will see it in the woods, you will see it by itself, but typically you're seeing it in urban suburban areas in wood chips growing in clusters. That's an edible mushroom. Another lookalike you're very likely to find this time of year is Megacalibia rodmani, which is the platterful mushroom. This mushroom is much more stout. It's got way more substance to it. It has whitish gills that aren't as crowded and these gills are directly attached to the stem and this mushroom deposits a white spore print. But this is not a deadly mistake. It's not a very tasty mistake to make either. It is an edible mushroom. It just doesn't taste that great. But notice the differences between these two. This one does get to be much bigger though. But this one has the whitish gills, very crowded, which become pinkish. Mega Calibia rodmani has whitish gills, more widely spaced, and they don't really turn pinkish. And a white spore print, pinkish brown spore print. So now that we know a little bit about the key identifying characteristics, now that we know about some lookalikes, let's talk about the edibility of Pluteus cervinus and the Pluteus cervinus group. But before we do that, let me just throw out this disclaimer because you know I talk a lot about plant and mushroom identification, but I don't always throw a disclaimer out there. I think it's warranted this time for Pluteus cervinus. So read this really quickly, and then I'll see you in a couple seconds. First, why do they call this the deer mushroom? Does it taste like deer? Unfortunately not. Does it resemble deer to some degree? Yeah, it kind of looks like deer, you know, it has the brownish color, but many things are brown out here. You know, there are many trees that are brownish and we don't call them deer trees. So we would actually need a microscope to actually see why they call this the deer mushroom or the fawn mushroom or Pluteus cervinus. If you use a microscope, you would see that there are specialized cells in the gills known as pleurocystidia and these cells are antler tipped. They almost look like horns. So that's why they call it the deer mushroom. Now, as I mentioned before, this mushroom does smell like radishes or raw potatoes, and it does impart that flavor into your meals. And every time I've cooked up this mushroom, I found that to be true. And it does have a strange aftertaste to some degree, but if you mix it with butter, onions, garlic, salt, pepper, other alliums as well, you can mitigate that taste to some degree, but you're definitely going to have it. However, I did recently read that if you caramelize the deer mushroom first, then you will get rid of that radish-like flavor. So try that out. I might try that out as well and see if that's true. And if you've eaten this mushroom in the past or you really like to eat this mushroom now or you don't like to eat this mushroom, let me know your thoughts on the deer mushroom. I'd love to hear all about it. So to answer the question that I proposed in the beginning of this video, is it worth it to harvest this mushroom and to eat this mushroom, the deer mushroom? Of course, of course it is. It's one of the best ways to connect to your land, to build yourself out of the ingredients that make up your land. However, just be 100% positive that you do have Pluteus cervinus, remember the Pluteus cervinus group, before you decide to do anything with the mushroom. And once you do have it positively identified, I encourage you to cook it up and see what you think about the deer mushroom. Thanks so much for watching this video. As always, I truly appreciate it. I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I encourage you to head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter and follow me on social media at learnyourland. Thanks again for watching. Happy Mushroom Monday.